the classic film Jaws made us all afraid to go into the water and left many terrified by the sheer mention of the great white shark. You're gonna need a bigger boat. But while they may be the ocean's most feared fish, Hello. with each encounter making news. Off the east coast of Australia, a violent shark attack. A shark scare kept swimmers out of the waters off Cape Cod. All right, we got a shark. Scientists say there are more questions than answers when it comes to the great white. Massive knowledge gaps in the ocean's giants. We don't know where they breed. We don't know where they feed. We don't know where they give birth. So while the thought of Jaws may fill many with fear, are great white sharks really as scary as they seem? National Geographic magazine takes a deeper dive into the world of the great whites in its July issue, part of the magazine's Summer of Sharks, highlighting a different species each month. For more, we're joined now by National Geographic photographer Brian Scary. Brian, good morning. Good morning. You really got up close and personal with great whites here. I did. Some pretty stunning photographs. I want to show this one here and lift it up. I mean, you got this by uh, by actually putting a camera inside of a seal decoy? Correct, yeah, this was really the only way I could figure out a way of getting pictures of sharks in Cape Cod. These are a newly emerging population of white sharks in that region. They're not habituated to humans. They can't be attracted so far by chum. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was working with researchers who were doing a predation study trying to determine how they feed using decoys, and I figured if I could put a camera in there, I might get a picture. That's one biting a decoy right there. Exactly. There's such a fascination with these animals. I have to tell you, Shark Week is like an event at our house. Like Absolutely. we schedule our lives around Shark Week. Go. But I was really surprised that the article talks about how little is known, the gestation period, how long they live, how many there are in the ocean. Why don't we know anything, it seems well, like? Well, that's a very good point. You can imagine an animal the size of a pickup truck, you know, hunting along the coast of California or South Africa right. or Australia, and yet we know almost nothing about it. And it's because they live in the ocean and they're very random. It's hard to predict their movements and, you know, you don't have the access to animals underwater that you do terrestrially. So I think it's been a real challenge for researchers, but we are beginning to peel back some of those layers. You know, they're tagging them with satellite trackers, following their movements, and I believe in time Time in the next few years, we will reveal some of those secrets. Well, I, I was stunned to find out that no one, I mean, you're in the photography business, no one has ever actually taking, taken a picture of a great white shark giving birth. That's true. In fact, there are very few pictures of any species of shark actually mating or giving birth. That's how rare it is, even though there's lots of divers and cameramen in the water. We do know that the great white, in, in, when it leaves the coast, ends up, at least in California and Mexico, they end up going deep into the Pacific. Is that right? That's right. Um, the tagging data shows that there's this place that they call the cafe, where they believe maybe some mating is occurring out there, maybe some feeding. But again, there's still big gaps in that oceanic puzzle. They're tracking some of the movements, but they don't really know what's happening in those places. What I also found fascinating is that the article hints at just how intelligent these creatures are, well, especially what happens to them in captivity. Captivity. What do they do the few times they have been in captivity? Well, they've been unsuccessful in captivity, and typically the animal will either starve itself or, you know, sort of bang against the glass. They've been able to keep them for short periods, but they don't do very well. And this is a truly wild animal. And I think you're right. They do have a degree of cognition that we don't fully understand. I also believe in the time ahead that we'll see that sharks, as with many animals in the ocean, are a lot more intelligent than we've historically given them credit for. We, we don't know how many of them there actually are out there, but we, I mean, they sort of become the symbol of, of, of scariness of the deep. And yet, mm -hmm. the statistic is for swimmers, it's even rare. One in every 738 million beach visits, That's right. you get a shark attack. So it's like you got better odds of winning the lottery. Yeah, you know, as, as Peter Benchley said, I, I spent some time with Peter years ago before his death, and he mentioned that he tapped into some primal fear when he wrote Jaws about people being eaten. So I think we have that within us. But I think it's also important to recognize that these are complex, amazing animals that really should be respected. Brian Scary, who clearly is not scared <laughs> I wouldn't doing say any that. of this work.